So it's payday and you're not sure what to do with your first paycheck. You're excited and you can't wait to get off from work. Sure, it's Friday and everybody loves Friday, right? But what if I told you that payday is one of the most stressful day for most Americans? Did you know that one in five Americans run out of money before payday? Now that has always been a problem, but today with the pandemic, with inflation rates going sky high, with all of the economic issues, that is even getting worse. More and more people are running out of money before their next paycheck, before the month runs out people have run out of money now in today's video I want to give you five things that you can do with your very first paycheck to help keep you from running out of money before your next paycheck and whether you get paid weekly bi-weekly or monthly these things will work for you so let's get into the video number one you want to open up a bank account I know it's basic but many people are working and they do not have a savings account or a checking account. You must start with going to the bank or going online to open up your savings account and you need a checking account. Now for your checking account, this is the account you will use to pay your bills. The savings account, you want to have at least two of those and these two accounts, one you will use for your emergency fund. And then the second one, you're going to put aside a savings that you will use for later investment. So you need at least three accounts. Now, the best way to do this is to go online and you wanna to go to Google and you type in high yield interest rate savings account. So, because the, the local banks will give you very, very low minimal interest rates on your savings. However, if you get a high yield interest rates, you will get a little more, about 3%. I've even seen one that gives like 6%, 7%. But you can just go online and find a high yield savings account. Now, the problem with these, or the caution I should say with these accounts is that number one, you can only withdraw from there up to six times per month. So you have to keep track. If you end up withdrawing more than six times in one month, they will shut down your account. And I know that to be true because it's happened to me. They will shut down your account if you're withdrawing too much. So you want to make sure you plan correctly, like how much is going there, how much is going into the checking. You want to look at those numbers correctly every month. So you can only withdraw up to six times. And the other caution is that most likely you will not get an ATM card for these high yield accounts, the savings account, which is great because it keeps you from shopping and shopping and shopping till you drop. Okay. It keeps you from spending your money. So it is good that they will not allow you to withdraw too much. And it's also good that you will not get an ATM card with that online high yield savings account. So step one, you want to go ahead and open an account. Now, the second thing you want to do is you want to get direct deposits. Okay. So even before you, you get that check in your hand, you want to get direct deposit. How do you do that? You talk to your HR, your payroll department, and you fill out the form and you make sure to tell them you want 50% going to this savings account. You want 30% going over here. And then the balance goes over here. You just tell them which accounts. Now, why is it important to get direct deposit? Because Getting the direct deposit will stop you from having to go to the bank every day to cash your check or every week, every payday. It prevents you from wasting time. And on this path to wealth, the key, the very first key is making sure you're not wasting time. Time wasters will stop you from gaining wealth believe it. So you want to prevent your time from being wasted by opening your account ahead of time and also by signing up for direct deposit. And for God's sake, do not ever, ever use a paycheck cashing service. Now a paycheck cashing service is a place where people go outside of a bank to cash their checks. Usually if they don't have a bank account, they will visit one of those places where they cash the check for a fee. You do not want to use that service because they will charge you about 1% to even up to 12%. Some companies are charging you just to cash your check. Why would you want to do that? So for example, if your check is a thousand dollars, you go into that place to cash it. They will take 10, 
dollars to up to $120 from that check. So the money you walk away with will be less. You do not want that. Just simply open up a bank account so your money can be there for free. Also, we said that time is money. The more time you waste, the less money you will have. Time is more than money. The only time you need to visit a bank is if you don't have the required documents to open an account online. If you don't have the, the documents to open an account online, then yes, you might need to visit a bank. But please, if you can avoid it, avoid it. Having to cash your own check also means that you have more cash on your person and so you're exposed to more temptations right now you you have all this money carrying around you are tempted to go shopping you are tempted to buy this and to buy that etc remember out of sight means out of mind you want to have your money out of your sight so number one your action step was to go open up an account the second step for you is to go to your payroll department and tell them that you want to sign up for direct deposit. It's a no-brainer. Now, number three, and this is where it's, it's getting more serious. Number three, you want to adopt the concept of paying yourself first. So this is when you go to your payroll and you fill out the form, you want to pay yourself first. And according to David Back, who talks about that a lot, he said, if your financial plan is not automatic, you will fail. I repeat, if your financial plan is not automatic, you will fail. What this means is you want to automate your finances. You want to automate your savings. That means you don't have to think about it every week. You don't have to think about it every month. Every time you get a paycheck, you don't have to scratch your head and wonder, you know, how much should I say? How much do I put here? No, it's, you want to do it once and be done. You want to set it before you see that money, you are setting it. So that's the concept of paying yourself first. And imagine when we work, we are working, we get out of bed, we leave our warm bed, you know, we, we take the train. Some of us, we have to take the bus. Many people, they take two buses, three buses to, to get to work, travel for hours back and forth to work in someone else's business. And yet we don't pay ourselves. You have to pay yourself first. And that concept is where you work at least one hour for yourself. So for example, if you're earning $15 an hour, that's the minimum wage now in most of the United States. So for example, Massachusetts is $15 an hour minimum. So nobody will make less than that. California is $15 and 50 cents now as of 2023. Imagine you're earning $15 an hour for 40 hours a week. That's about $300. So you want to save, you are saving here at least one hour that you work for. So one hour, $15. Every day you want to save $15. That's paying yourself. So $15 of your working day goes to you. You know, It's not going to Verizon. It's not going to AT&T. It's not going to Comcast or the electric company. It's not going to your student loans. That one hour you worked, $15, goes straight to your savings account. So when you sign up the form for direct deposit, you're going to tell the payroll person on the form that you want that money going directly into that account. You want to be specific. So this is what you should be saving at a minimum. However, if you want to get there quicker, you want to put aside 50 five zero percent and it sounds high but if this is your first paycheck then it's probably because you're young you've just left school or you know your your parents are paying your way you you have housing everything so you don't have too many expenses at that stage so you can make the sacrifice and put aside 50 percent of your income of everything that you earn now you don't want to just save money because everybody says to save money. You want your money to have a purpose. You want to allocate your money for something specific. Have a plan for your money. So you want to say this is towards my house. This is for a plot of land. This is for investment in a business or real estate investment. Whatever it is, you have to figure out something 
where you can allocate your money to. Otherwise you won't know where this money is going. And when you tell your money where to go, it will obey you. But if you don't tell your money where to go, then you will be wondering where did all my money go? Right? So you want to avoid wondering where this money went by first making a plan for that money. So our plan for the money is 50% if possible will go into our savings account. If that's not possible, we will take, we must at least one hour, we must pay ourselves first at least one hour. So that's the concept of making your financial plan automatic. You want to automate everything, right? Even paying your bills, you need to automate. That way you're not worrying about it. You're not forgetting a bill. If you don't automate your checking account, paying your bills, you might forget, you know, oh, I didn't pay electricity this month or, oh, I forgot to be, I forgot this. Just put everything on automatic payments. That way you're just focusing on making the money and you don't have to worry about it. Number four, you want to start the process of investing. So with your first paycheck, you are going to start investing. Okay. And we talked a little bit in step three and two, when, once you get the right deposit, you allocate those accounts, but one of the accounts must be that investment account. So that would be for you a Roth IRA, which is one of the best accounts you can see. This is a tax-free account. Once you put the money in there, once you withdraw at retirement, that money comes to you tax-free. You do not have to pay taxes on it. So this is one of the best accounts. So some of your money should start going into an investment account ASAP. So if you're 16 years old and you have your first paycheck, ASAP retirement account, rough IRA go. If you're 14 years old with your, your first paycheck, you're thinking retirement account, rough IRA go. This is what you're going to do. You want to open those accounts and start putting a little bit, a little bit in there. Now, how much should you put there? It is recommended about 10 to 20% should go into that account. Okay. 10 to 20%. And that's a good balance. And the sooner you start, the better off you'll be. Let's move on to number five. The final one that I'm going to give you is to give back. Once you get your first paycheck, you want to give back. What does it mean to give back? You think of the people who helped you so far in your life. So maybe someone who helped you get a job. Maybe someone gave you advice for your resume, maybe someone set up the interview for you. Maybe somebody helped you with just anything. Whoever helped you get that first job, you should give back to them, including your parents. You know, you want to give something back to them from your paycheck as a token of gratitude. Just saying, thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for helping me eat your food to munch off of you all these years. You, you just, no, you're not paying them, but you're showing your appreciation because really you can't pay back for that, but you're showing your appreciation. You're showing your gratitude with the very first paycheck that you have. And something happens when you give from the very first part of what you receive, something happens. It just opens doors for you. So it's good advice that you always remember to give back from your first paycheck. You want to ignore. I know when you get your first paycheck, you want to spend, right? You want to get new shoes. You want to get new clothes. You want to get the new gadget, the latest this and the latest that, but it, it is good advice that you ignore those temptations and it's called life inflation, lifestyle inflation. You want to inflate. It's like you were, you were eating ramen noodles all this time and you finally get a paycheck. Now you want steak. No. You can upgrade a little at a time, but don't go all the way in spending all your money because you want to show that, you know, you, you want to reward your, yourself for hard work. Be careful with lifestyle inflation. Do not go on a rampage just buying all new clothes. Now you have a job, so you want to buy new, new shoes. You, you have a job now, so you want to buy a designer brand. It's, this is going to take you down the road to poverty. It's going to take you down the road to basement lifestyle. You do not want to do that. Okay. So you want to ignore the temptations to buy the latest and the greatest out there. You want to ignore those temptations to go shopping and shopping again and continue on the path that you have started. So remember last month, you didn't have these things. Now that you have a new paycheck, it doesn't mean now 
you, you get to have it, right? So ignore those temptations and continue with the savings plan that I gave you, the investment plan, and do without those things that you've been doing without all this time. And there you have it. If you like this video, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.